Hi, my name is Isadora Jackson. Today is October 29th, 2024. Um, I'm a multimedia artist based in New Mexico, where my upbringing in the southwestern border region and my background in cultural anthropology have significantly shaped my artistic vision. Growing up in a culturally rich yet politically complex environment has influenced how I perceive the world and create art. I explore both um, real and imagined boundaries, geographical, emotional, and political that impact our understanding of identity and connection. Currently, alongside my practice, I serve as an arts associate professor in El Paso, where I share my um, love for art and culture with my students. Um, my husband and I currently split our time between New Mexico and Colorado, raising our three sons, ages 20, 14, and 11. This fam family dynamic, along with the experiences we share, deeply informs my work as I explore the intersections of identity and belonging in both personal and broader social contexts. Um, my childhood experiences have really instilled in me an appreciation for spaces as layered constructs where culture, cultural, emotional, and political boundaries converge. And that perspective informs the recurring themes of my work, including psychological landscapes, borders, and really the navigation of these kinds of complex spaces. And I do that through a lexicon, a symbolic lexicon of imagery. Um, and I have a blend of influences. I would say um, there's lots of artists I adore. I just love artists. But there's a couple that really kind of were instrumental in different times in my life for kind of igniting and um, inspiring a lot of the ways that I kind of thought about art and I approached art. And one of those is Frida Kahlo um, because she really had this exploration, the surrealist exploration of identity, pain, and culture. And that's always really deeply resonated with me. Um, my background in semiotics shaped my approach to my visual storytelling. And that was really informed by theory um, and drawing on the work of philosophers like Roland Barthes, um, who really kind of opened up my eyes to the power of symbols and visual language. And then there's artists like Hermione Hammond, who layered iconography, and her line work is just so gorgeous. And the same for Kara Walker and the silhouettes that she used to tell a story. She uses shapes to tell stories, ultimately, and it's really really incredible and I just love her, the craft in her work and the way that she can create um, forms and how and how they can have this just really visceral and, and powerful message um, just in silhouette which is uh, pretty incredible and she's drawing on all these kinds of um, older ideas about you know these Victorian silhouettes etc so it to me it just has so much meaning and then there's James Terrell, who's had a profound impact on me as well, particularly um, in his use of light as a medium. Using light as a form of um, art is has really impacted me. Um, and what I'm focusing on right now is I, I have a few exciting exhibitions coming up where I'll be um, showing my rice paper drawings that are soon t sewn together and screen printed and have a lot of um, dye and fabric dye in them. Um, and they also have light and projected imagery. And then the next show coming up is at the Carrion Gallery in Fort Worth, Texas. And that's part of uh, a larger um, uh, exhibition um, with a bunch of really incredible uh, female identifying artists. And then I am part of uh, Borderlines. It's uh, a, a, um, a project really to facilitate meaningful connections and exchanges between individuals and communities um, from diverse backgrounds, bridging you know geographical, cultural, and ideological divides. That is its kind of impetus. Um, and that will be at Casa Otro in Mesilla, New Mexico, and then in Parsons Gallery in New York City, and in Bishop Gallery in Brooklyn, New York. And those are all slated for 2025. And I'm also focusing on a collaborative project with my partner, Eric Jackson, called Woven Landscapes. And that project merges art, nature, and projection video mapping that creates immersive experiences that reflect our interconnectedness with the environment, the physical environment. Um, and alongside this, I'm continuing to explore the use of light reflective paint and technologies in my artwork, pushing the boundaries of how people engage with art at different times of the day in both public and private spaces. 
Uh, one of the biggest challenges of being an artist is really that balance, balancing time in the studio with practicality. As artists, we want to push boundaries and innovate, but we also face the need to sustain our practice, right? Whether through financial means, time, or energy, there's always this tension between my life as an artist and a professor and the realities of life, especially as a parent or caregiver. And the advice I tell my younger self is to trust the process and not be afraid of where the journey takes you. It's okay to not have everything figured out. Um, exploration without fear and exploration with curiosity um, and just being open. And that means open to being very wrong about something. Um, you know, those are all ways that we grow. And I think as artists, all we want to do is grow and learn and kind of how do we show that in a different kind of way. And so... Um, to me, that would be kind of uh, the biggest thing is to really just trust that all the unexpected paths lead to the most rewarding experiences better than you can ever imagine. Um, I love experimenting with unconventional mediums, combining utilitarian objects with fine art, uh, such as uh, plexiglass and screen printing and light and projection mapping on mylar and... Um, I love using those kinds of materials and just kind of transforming them and finding materials and transforming them into fine art. Um, I use a lot of glow-in-the-dark paint, reflective paint, light gels for lights. I do projection mapping and sound, and those are things I've incorporated into my work to create these kind of dynamic pieces that change throughout the day and night. And that helps me bring a new dimension to my work and allows the viewer to experience it differently depending on the time that they see it. And, you know, it's also referencing the ephemeral and, and talking about time and layers and, and you know, about time as this continuum and the interconnectedness of, of really life. Um, and I love listening to audiobooks while I work, especially one centered on psychology, human experience, and how we perceive the world. There's something about the process of mark making that helps me really absorb and retain the information more deeply if I'm listening to, to information while I'm drawing. Um, and then when I'm not listening to books, I either work in silence or I choose music that helps me channel like a more physical energy into my process because a lot of my stuff is pretty physical, it's pretty big, um, and it takes a lot of my entire body to kind of work through. Um, and right now I'm just obsessed with Ch Chapel Rowan um, and so uh, I've been playing her a lot but I'm sure that will change soon but I get kind of stuck on people and then I just hear them out until I, I can't hear them anymore. <laughs> um, I guess one of the best reactions someone has had to my artwork um, was during a solo exhibition in Lubbock, Texas at the Charles Adams Studio Project. Um, I use glow-in-the-dark elements and um, as it kind of um, as the light changed in the room, the light gels, light gels changed and the experience completely kind of metamorphosized and transformed and people understood what, what was happening and what I was trying to do, even without having had information from me because I was late to the opening. And, um, so that was really, really wonderful because to see other people kind of enjoy and get what you're trying to do, you've spent, you know, um, at that point, it had been seven years working on that specific work. So it, it was really meaningful to me to kind of hear that people understood what I was trying to do. Um, and what do I hope they take away? Um, I hope they walk away with a deeper sense of connection to themselves, to others, and to the spaces they inhabit. My work it's really this kind of invitation to engage with symbols and narratives that ask people to reflect on their own boundaries, identities, and the complex relationships that we all navigate in life. Um, and so that's my hope. And, you know, it could also be that they just liked art a little bit more after seeing the work or felt more of a connection to art. And that's also the, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. And if you want to learn more about my work, you can follow my work on Instagram. I am at Isadora.a.jackson. And for more, more updates, you can check out my website, which is Isadora, I-S-A-D-O-R-A, Jackson.com, J-A-C-K-S-O-N.com. Thanks so much.